Hey folks, I'm proud to introduce to you guys a tool set that we sort of hacked together, me and Evan, and uh, we were just kind of like looking at the possibility of automating uh, the uh, despill edge, not the core, but the despill edge uh, workflow, and uh, you know, for green screen and blue screen stuff. So we've we made a little tool here, it, it, it uses a bunch of other tools inside of it, and we did a lot of online research to see how or what this can be uh, or how it can be implemented and so forth. But uh, I, I don't think I've seen any tool set do this. I'm sure without a doubt that in-house studios are uh, have created something like this uh, to be used. If there's a tool out there that already exists that does this, uh, please let me know. But I don't, I check Nukipedia unless I'm blind. I, I didn't see anything. But anyway, what it does is it, it kind of a, takes the edge color and extends it out so that you can use this as your uh, edge despill. As you can see, it's interactively changing as the character is moving around. So let me just go ahead and show you this tool. And you can get this uh, both on Nukipedia and also just simply copy paste it from the link below uh, from my website uh, right in. It just It's using like D-Spill, AP D-Spill, and a bunch of other uh, little doohickeys and so forth. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, what I want to hear is I just, uh, again, I'm using uh, Peter Timberlake's footage that he offers online for free. Special thanks to him. And this is just a shot of a kid on a green screen flapping around. So I did an IBK color uh, to take that. It didn't get everything, obviously. I'm just kind of throwing this together very, very quickly. Um, but anyway, and then I used the AP screen, uh, screen tool, as you can see here. Uh, just to kind of like knock it out and so we get something um, There is an optional input here to core mat. It's not needed unless you want to do edge treatment So I offer the ability to do uh, a universal overall edge treatment on the character which you would probably Want to key mix in another one with uh, that this the options turned off for that uh, but anyway, um, I'll go ahead and plug this in. So you start with your D spill edge hacking. You see, there's a lot going on here. You know, I, I can't even fit in this page. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, you just go ahead and click your color, and then I'll just go ahead and sample the color here. Yeah. Oops, there we go. So uh, what it does again is it repeats the last uh, line here, so you can see. That and again, this was all. Uh, there, there was a challenge put out by Pedro from Complayer to, uh, you know, kind of use uh, in a specific operation. So special thanks to him for kind of demoing this. I figured we just put it into like a quick package here. But you can see expand color. Um, you only have to uh, expand it out just a little bit. Um, any areas with heavy motion blur. Uh, you know, you might have to, I don't think it'll be an issue anyway, but again, you can see how if we kind of take a look at it. It is basically expanding the last bit of color there. So you can change this up, uh, you know, if you want to like play around. This basic park is basically AP D-Spill from Adrian Poyo. Um, I believe uh, Pedro was using Key Light, so we, we decided to just use D-Spill. And you can see if we come in here and we take the uh, expand color, uh, we can expand it out. And again, you don't you don't want to go you, you really don't want to go that far. This is just like a blur operation. And you guys could go into this by hitting uh, you know S up here and just jumping in just to see the the guts of this. It's not really complicated. Um, hence the name. We kind of hacked it together. Uh, but anyway, so you do have protect tones, you know, you can come in here and again, this is only for edge work, not for core work. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, there's also this color correct edge option, which allows you to brighten or darken the edge if you wish. Uh, and again, you can change change the hue if you want or whatever. You can do any sort of adjustments if you feel that it needs, needs it. <clears throat> uh, for some reason, by default, I kind of like bring this brightening I kind of bring this down a little bit as far as I kind of leave it at the brightening stage. So uh, with that says, uh, with that set, you can see that you can do all this. Now this part right here is the edge artifact treatment. Again, so this is a lot of stuff that I learned from Tony Lyons and so forth in certain techniques, not specifically, you know, uh, one person, but um, using the uh, blur mid max operation. So you can click on this. This allows you to see the physical mask of uh, the in and out point. So you can actually, this is a very low res image, so it's going to be hard to see this. But it's kind of showing you the, uh, 
you know, the area that's getting treated, so to speak. So you can turn that off. And then you can mix in a mid-max. Again, this is so low res, you're not going to see it on here. I'm going to show you another demonstration here in, another, in, in a minute. And then you can also pulse blur the area as well. So you can see I can come over here and just, you know, blur that area. Now that that's overkill, obviously, you probably want to do just a, just a subtle amount of this. And then I also have enable erode in out, which does an erode in and out. So when you start to mix this in, it's not just doing a mid max, it's doing an erode in out and mid max. So you can kind of, you know, real subtle things. It's all usually using like an edge detect to just work on this edge here. Nothing too crazy. And that's pretty much it. So again, it, it, I, we found in production it actually speeds up workflows like by, I mean like 70, 80% uh, as far as like that. And then you'll have to deal with the core on your own obviously um, because you know, you're not automating the core. You would obviously overlay your core, core mat on top of this, uh, but yeah. So here's a quick JPEG I pulled off online, probably treated for all I know uh, from a fan or something, I don't know, but it's basically a JPEG from the Avengers. And as you can see, there's lots of spill, there's lots of variation of color and so forth in different areas. And you would have to usually hand animate, um, you know, different colors here to match up as all this action is happening. So what I have here is the footage. I have my edge despill all getting done in one specific node, automated. And then I have my core despill, which you're gonna have to do on your own to deal with the core of the interior where you kind of maintain the skin tones. I have my core mat from a prime mat. I have my edge mat from a IBK gizmo. And that gets merged in and pre-multiplied and put onto the background. So if I go ahead and take a look at the final result, uh, right here, if I go ahead and disable my core and edge, you can see how this is basically extending out. Now, this is a little bit too pinkish. I probably have my, uh, you know, edge uh, limiter a little bit too hot, so I'll start to pull that back. There we go. And again, you want to watch out for that type of stuff. But you can see the difference here if I go ahead and dis disable, re enable, how it's kind of extended out that color. Uh, each individual pixel. So you can see on the fingers here, on the hair, on the face, the lip is being extended, even the, the gunfire, uh, obviously the core of the, the, the fireball is a little bit off. But again, all of this gets brought back with the core mat. Um, uh, maybe I didn't do enough core work on that. But anyway, so you can see this is basically it. Again, you do not need a lot of this expand color. You know, um, you can kind of judge it by the, you know, the final product if you want. You know, if I take the expand color, start bringing it back, you see there's the black outline, start to pull it back a little bit. So again, we can just kind of play that until we get a nice result. And again, I just want to demonstrate the tool sets that are down here, Edge Artifact Treatment. Again, it says requires the core mat input. So if you turn on Enable Mid-Max, you will see a nice little outline here. If I go back to the despill edge here, so you can see the area that you want to treat. So you can take the edge inside edge and you can expand that out. You can also expand this out. And then the blur, outside blur, is uh, the amount of blur that's happening in transition. So if you find yourself bumping into artifacts or something like that, uh, you can do a, a mix here like I've been doing here. I'll just turn these down. So you can do a, this is basically a blurring of this masked area and then uh, minning, uh, merging it over with a min, so you can see it kind of alleviates some of those artifacts, or you can choose max, okay, sums differentiate between the, the bright areas and the dark areas of artifacting. Um, and then in combination, both of these, you can do a, a quick erode in and out, which is by a, a value of two, and that will kind of erode in that little area there. You can see it's giving it a little bit better of a treatment. I'm trying to find, see if I can find another edge here that has any type of artifacts. So if I kind of come around, again, like for instance, I mean, I don't know, maybe like right here, you know, I'll go ahead and turn that on. You can see we're in, we're, we're within the boundary area. You could turn that off and do enable road in, and you can see I could just do a little bit of treatment there. Uh, you know, if I want, you can see if I turn on road in, and then, you know, you can even combine some max. And then you also have edge pulse blur. You don't want to abuse this, obviously. <laughs> because you're going to be blurring the daylights out of uh, this. You can see you could just add just a little hair of it if you, if you want to have a little bit of blur anyway. And then, like I mentioned before, if you do have 
shots where there's artifacts and large whipping hand motions or whatever, you need to extend out the mask. Uh, you just go ahead and take the like, for instance, the outside edge and extend that out so that it kind of it'll it'll treat the areas that are further out. But uh, this is just for you to kind of see see what's what on here. And then again, like I said, the core takes care of everything. So you can see if I disable and re-enable the, the core addition kind of thrown on the top. I still have some despill in her skin, obviously. And again, it's not perfect. So if you want if you want to come in here and key mix in a copied version of this where the luminance is different, again, you could come over here and adjust uh, the luminance values of the color correct edge. Um, and it, it, it's really quick. You just copy paste this, key mix it in, or key mix in a uh, despilled edge, uh, you know, uh, whatever you to your heart's desires but honestly i think it, it works really good as far as like uh even when you have interactive lighting going on and you have them on the green screen that interactive lighting changes on the edges flares and so forth will interact with the the last edge here again nothing is perfectly automated in this industry obviously but it is something that you guys can play with we've heard it bogs down in nuke 14 this is built in nuke 13 so if you guys have any issues this is really a call to arms to say hey uh, if you guys could help us, I'm not a super script genius here, uh, so if you can help us try to work out the kinks, maybe optimize this for faster speeds. I've heard it kind of bogs down a little bit um, memory-wise in Nuke 14. I'm not having any issues, uh, but it is a it's a fun little tool, you know that you know that you know heck you know give it a try see if you can use it. Um, and again, this is in its early release, so we want to do uh, later versions. If you want this, you can copy paste it from the link below from my website, or you can actually go ahead and um, just get it from Nukipedia.